So let's solve the following application problem. <clears throat> we have a population of bacteria that grows proportional to the number of bacteria present. So we have a rate of growth that's proportional to the actual amount present at all times t. Um, so let's suppose that the initial population is 100 and the population after two hours has grown to 150. So we want to know when will the population double in size, right? So let's first take on what it is that we're given. We have a population of bacteria grows proportional to the number of bacteria present. So we're saying that the rate of change in the population is sort of proportional to the population that's already there. And we recall that if we want to drop the similar proportionality and replace it with an equal sign, we have to add some constant of proportionality. So I get P prime is equal to KP. Um, this is just a Malthusian growth model. Um, so let's see what else we have. Suppose that the initial population is 100. <clears throat> so here we get the fact that the population at time t equals 0 is going to be 100. And the population after 2 hours has grown to 150. So we can say that P2 is 150. And the question we want to answer is when will the population double in size? So it seems like we want to know a time. So P at T equals what time will the population double? So I guess that will be 200 if we start off with 100. Um, so let's, let's go back to the original ODE. So we have P prime is equal to KP. Um, in this case, let's go ahead and take the P prime and write it as DP by DT is equal to KP. And I've just dropped the uh, time uh, dependence. Okay. I just dropped the independent variable. So I have DP, DT is equal to KP. And if I separate this guy out, I get that DP over P is equal to KDT. And so I have all P's on one side and all the time stuff on the other side. The K is just a constant. I mean, it could it can go on either side. It doesn't really matter. Um, we're ready to integrate, okay, in an indefinite sense. Um, and so the integral of dp over p, of course, is just a natural log of the magnitude of p. And on the right-hand side, the integral of uh, dt really is going to just be kt plus some arbitrary constant. Now we know that the population is always positive. Um, there's no such thing as a negative population. So we could remove the absolute value bar since it's always going to be a positive value and write it as just ln p is equal to kt plus c. And if we exponentiate both sides, we finally get out our function p of t is equal to e to the kt plus c. All right, so as a sidebar, let's recall from algebra that if I multiply like bases, let's say a to the m times a to the n, I keep the base and I add the exponents. Well, looking at e to the kt plus c, it seems as if I decided to write it this way. I could probably separate the e to the kt plus c as e to the kt times e to the c. So e is just some number, 2.71 blah blah blah, raised to some constant, like it could be squared, cubed, or raised to the whatever uh, power, but we find that this is just another arbitrary constant. So I'll just call this c1. So I could write this as c1 e to the kt, because again it will not be determined until we apply our initial condition. So let's do that. <clears throat> we know that the population at time t is equal to 0 is 100. So I'll get that, let's put it over here. We get that 100, that's our p of t, equals c1 e to the k times 0. And of course, k times 0 is just 0, and e to the 0 is 1. So that really just tells us that c1 is equal to 100. And that's typical because. Um, we could have written p of 0 is equal to p naught, um, and that's uh, a typical equation you'll see in like algebra books, uh, that if we had this condition, um, you'll see this equation maybe written in 
uh, some pre-cal book or algebra book, P naught E to the KT that rep represent the growth equation. Okay, um, but here is just going to be 100. So now I'll get that P of T is just going to be 100 e to the KT. Okay, and so now um, we need to determine this value of K. It's a growth rate, and of course, if you worked in a lab uh, for certain bacteria, you'll probably know the rate at which they they grow. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and see if we can find it with the information that we're given. So we're sort of given this other state of the system. So we're given that two hours later. So it's clear that time, the zero to two, and even this time that we find later, it's going to be measured in hours. But two hours later, we have 150 bacteria. So, so let's go here. And let's just say we have 150 bacteria. And our model is... 100 E and it's in two hours so we'll get 2 K and so if I divide by 100 I get 150 over 100 which is the same as 3 halves equals E to the 2 K and if I take the natural log of both sides and divide by 2 I find that K is equal to 1 half the natural log of 3 halves okay so now uh, my model is more refined, if you will, that now I know the rate at which these bacteria uh, grow. So I could write this now for my model. P of T is equal to 100 E to the, let's just write it as T over 2 times the natural log of 3 halves. And that's just an algebra model. I mean, now it could be used to predict the time if we know the population at some later state or uh, we can find the population if we uh, are given some time value and it just so happens we're asked uh, when will the population reach 200 so now I want to say that 200 is going to equal to 100 e to the t over 2 ln 3 halves and so 200 over 100 is just 2 and that equals e to the t over 2 ln 3 halves and if we solve for t I will take the natural log of both sides I get ln of 2 equals t over 2 ln 3 halves and if I multiply both sides by 2 and then divide by the natural log of 3 halves I get 2 ln 2 all over ln 3 halves which is roughly equal to let me see I found it's about 3.42 hours